Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm Denver Police Chief uh, Ron Thomas. I'm joined here today by uh, Councilman uh, Flynn, as well as Executive Director Armando Soldate, uh, Director of Parks and Recre Recreation Happy Haynes, uh, Mike Mills from um, Crime Stoppers, as well as District 4 Commander Brad Qualley and Major Crimes Division Commander Matt Clark. Uh, we're all here. Uh, to announce that we have made an arrest in connection with the murder of a 14 year old boy that occurred here about eight weeks ago. Um, a very tragic situation, you know, always a tragedy when someone loses their life, particularly tragic when, uh, when the perpetrator and the victim are youth. Even more impactful when it occurs, you know, in, in a place like a rec center, which is the backdrop here. Um, a place where people uh, want to bring their kids uh, for, for safe and healthy activities. Uh, I really want to highlight the partnership uh, with our community. They were very um, uh, integral in us uh, coming to a conclusion and making an arrest in this case. Um, again, really want to highlight the, the tragedy and how impactful that is. And I am committed to continuing to work with Councilman uh, Flynn, as well as our many other city partners to really uh, uh, create a safe uh, community here uh, in Denver. So uh, with that, I will uh, turn it over to Commander Clark for some details. Thank you, Chief. I'm Commander Matt Clark, CLARK, Commander of the Denver Police Department's Major Crimes Division. Uh, thank you for being here today and giving us an opportunity uh, to announce the arrest of the offender in relation to the case of the homicide involving Joe Joe. Uh, this has been a lengthy and extensive investigation that was conducted by members of the Denver Police Department Homicide Unit uh, with assistance from the Denver Crime Lab uh, to get us to this point today. And while we announced the arrest um, of the offender, we also recognize the grief and trauma that the Argonne family still continues to um, process uh, with the loss of JoJo. Uh, members of the investigative team, members of our victim services unit continue to provide support for the Aragon family and will do so as we move into this next prosecu prosecution phase. Um, I'd like to provide a brief overview of the incident and provide additional context as to what we've learned through the investigation. Um, please understand that the uh, offender in this case is a juvenile, so I am actually specifically limited in some of the information I can provide. Specifically, I will not be identifying the individual. Um, I cannot provide a booking photo, and the affidavit that was drafted in support of his arrest is not eligible for release at this point. Uh, with that in mind, I'll provide a little bit of context, and then uh, once we conclude uh, the statements, we'll take some questions as we're able to. Um, on August 8th, around 3 o'clock, um, just in the area behind us here, Denver police officers were called to a report of an individual that was down on the ground that appeared to have been assaulted there. The arriving officers located Jojo there who had uh, signs of significant trauma. Uh, Jojo was ultimately uh, pronounced deceased at the scene. As a result of that, a homicide investigation um, was initiated. The Denver officer of the medical examiner's office concluded that, uh, excuse me, they completed an autopsy and determined that the cause of death was multiple sharp force injuries as well as a gunshot wound and the manner of death was determined to be a homicide. Uh, over the past seven weeks, the investigators from the homicide unit have been working diligently, um, following leads, analyzing evidence, talking to neighbors and, and uh, triaging tips that came in, uh, to, uh, which ultimately led to the identification of a juvenile offender. Uh, the members of the homicide team uh, requested, uh, submitted an affidavit uh, in support of an arrest warrant. That warrant was approved yesterday by a judge, and the uh, juvenile offender was taken into custody in southwest Denver without incident last evening. Um, I want to thank members of the southwest Denver community uh, who assisted and provided critical information to the investigators in the early stages of the investigation. Um, I also want to acknowledge and thank uh, Crime Stoppers, our partner in Crime Stoppers, uh, for the work that they did. A Crime Stoppers bulletin was released shortly after the incident occurred, and we received over a dozen tips which were useful to investigators as they worked through um, and identified the juvenile offender. To provide context in regards to the incident, I can tell you that the investigators determined that the victim and the offender did know each other. They attended school together the year prior, last year. Uh, throughout the summer, it appears that the 
two were having conversations back and forth about the sale uh, of a firearm. One individual was going to sell a firearm to another individual. That transaction occurred on August 8th in the park behind us uh, near the Southwest Rec Center. And during that transaction, the suspect violently assaulted the victim and ultimately killed him and robbed him. This was not a random uh, encounter. This was not a chance encounter. Uh, it was a planned uh, meeting that ended tragically. The juvenile offender is currently being held for first degree murder, aggravated robbery, tampering with physical evidence in a felony crime, and possession of a handgun by a juvenile offender. Um, as I wrap up, I just want to again thank the community, the family, the Argonne family for their patience uh, throughout this investigation. Seven weeks is a long time uh, to wait for answers, but uh, the investigators who were responsible for this investigation did not stop at any point. Um, there was significant resources devoted to this as we do every homicide investigation to resolve that case, um, identify and hold the offender accountable. The Denver District Attorney's Office will ultimately determine what charges will be filed and if uh, or whether the juvenile will be charged as an adult. Um, with that, I would like to just uh, I'd like to introduce Mike Mills, uh, the Executive Director of Crime Stoppers, who's a strong partner uh, for the Denver Police Department and other metro agencies. Thank you all for being here. I want to thank the community, the Denver Police, and our law enforcement partners. I especially want to thank our coordinator, Detective Sherry Duran, for the hard work that she puts in to get the information to, to law enforcement and to our board of directors. Um, without this partnership and the trust of the community, our organization would not be viable and credible. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Kevin Flynn, give him an opportunity to say a few words uh, about the community that he represents. Thank you, Chief. I know that uh, you're here to ask questions. I won't hold you up uh, much longer. Uh, I used to do what you do, and when I was a night cops reporter at the Rocky Mountain News, I got to know that the Denver Police Department's homicide unit was top-notch from the 80s and the 90s, and I think today it's no exception. They work tirelessly, but they also require help from the community, many of whose members are here today. Because when this happened, this community came together. It's, it's, it's no lie when, when uh, the chief says that the community really produced information that was helpful. A uh, short time after JoJo was killed in this building here, we held a meeting on short notice and 140 of our neighbors turned out to hear more about it and to interact with uh, the chief, with uh, Commander Qualley from District 4, with Matt Clark, and, and with the other folks who were here from DPD. We really pulled together. Uh, I, sorry, it's just heartbreaking. Uh, bring up uh, another um, uh, director happy Haynes thank you uh, chief and for all of you for being here um, I first want to extend again my condolences to the uh, Aragon family uh, as councilman Flynn said it, it, it's the most unbearable
uh, to watch. Um, with our police creation and all of the agencies who try to make our communities um, um, a wonderful places uh, to live. So uh, again, um, thank you for being out here and again, thank you to the community. Thank you, Director Haynes. Uh, that uh, concludes the presentation portion of our briefing. Uh, I can answer questions at this time. Chief, yes. is there a reason to believe that there may be more suspects involved or suspects or persons of interest that the police are still trying to get a hold of? Or any reason to believe there were more people here on the, in the night of that incident? I don't believe so, but I'll defer to, to Commander Clark to answer that more thoroughly. Uh, the question was, uh, do we believe there's anybody else responsible or, or uh, outstanding in this case? Uh, at this point, we believe the offender that we have in custody is responsible for JoJo's death. Uh, we are looking at the possibility of uh, that other people possibly were involved, but at this point, there's not evidence to support that. Um, if, if anybody has any information or evidence uh, to support that, we'd ask that they call Crime Stoppers and remain anonymous, and, and we can provide that information to our investigators. Are you able to differentiate between who was buying and selling we do know that, but that's not something we're going to release at this point. Yes, ma'am. Do you know if the gun being sold in the transaction was the one used in the crime? Um, that's also something I'm not able to disclose at this point. Um, I'm not sure if you'd be able to speak to this, but it was just mentioned about uh, perhaps safety improvements being made to the area surrounding this uh, particular center here. Have there been steps taken? Uh, so we are working with our partners with uh, Denver Parks and Rec to um, to create some additional safety enhancements. There are safety enhancements that uh, have been added to this rec center over time, and there's certainly a process uh, to enhance the safety around all of our rec centers, and, and this is in line with that. You mentioned the family. Uh, do they have a message at all for the public on, on this particular day? I know that we're all hearing everything, so I just wanted to see if there uh, so we did have an investigator reach out directly with them and have a conversation. I won't share the details of that conversation. Commander Chief, you talked about community a lot. And there's a lot of members of the community here, and you gave credit to them for, you know, getting you guys closer. To Absolutely. I think we did that. Uh, you know, and I'll say that again. Uh, very thankful for members of the community that helped us. Uh, thankful to the members of the community. I see a number of folks that were here uh, the day that we all kind of got together to really talk about the healing process relative to this heinous crime. And I uh, was so certainly thankful once again to their continued support. That's great, Chief. I wonder, can you elaborate on what information was provided by the community in order for you all to get some sort of resolution in this case? I'm not going to do that at this time. That's going to be part of our investigation. No. Not going to happen, all right. Mm -hmm. Council Member Flynn, uh, do you have another uh, reason for what may have compelled you to come out here and make a statement today? I know that you mentioned that you had been in meetings and everything here. So, repeat the first part. Uh, what compelled you to come out here today specifically with, with this as well? I know that this you is, this is probably the most terrible crime that's ever occurred in this neighborhood. I live two blocks up to the street. We got 140 of our neighbors to fill that gym about a month ago, after, or shortly after the, the crime. Uh, this it, just a terrible, terrible event that needed to be addressed. And it's the heart of my community. And we've had enough of it. And what the, what the chief said is correct. Or what Matt said is correct. Who said? Well, whoever said it. Guns in the hands of children produce terrible results. And we simply have to address youth gun violence in this city. We're looking at the 2023 budget right now. And there, are, uh, there is funding in there that addresses that. And we'll be looking at it very closely. I'm going to wonder now if it's enough. Thank you.